Hey guys, how are you going? I'm Sam from Core Electronics and today we're going to be taking a look at using external displays with your Raspberry Pi. Now, the Raspberry Pi is capable of doing a lot of things. It can run scripts on startup, it can automate a lot of things, but for most of the time you're going to want to use it like you would a computer with a screen where you can see the desktop and the graphic user interface and see what's going on. So, we're going to look at a couple of different ways that you can connect up a display. Now, the primary method of display for the Raspberry Pi is the HDMI port. So, HDMI is a standard of audio-visual communication, and it's been around since sort of the mid-2000s. Now, it's got a plug that looks a bit like that, and you should be familiar with it. It's the standard for most TVs, computers, monitors, things like that. And it carries high-definition video as well as two-channel audio. Now, the Raspberry Pi can output both video and audio, on the HDMI port, and it's a full-size HDMI, not a mini HDMI. Now, the Raspberry Pi will work with that straight out of the box. There's no configuration needed or no settings to change. You simply get yourself an HDMI cable, plug one end, it doesn't matter what, into the HDMI port on your Raspberry Pi, and then you can connect that other end up to your TV, your computer monitor, anything like that, the Raspberry Pi is going to work with any screen that has a HDMI port. Now, that is method one. As we said, there's a couple of different ways we can do it. There's also composite video. Now, composite video is an older analog technology and we've got it in the form of this 3.5 mil jack. Now, you might be familiar with composite audio and video uh, with the red, white and yellow uh, plugs, the RCA jacks that you would plug into amplifiers and TVs and other you know audio visual equipment but it's been condensed down into a 3.5 mil four pole connector here now this looks like a standard uh, headphone connector if you can see see that there uh, and, it, and it's the exact same shape and size except there's four different tabs on there to connect to your cable and that allows for ground audio left audio right and video and so you can take that with one of our uh, RCA to 3.5mm cables that we've linked into the article and you can connect that straight up and it'll work with older TVs and things like that but it's not really a recommended uh, method of connection because it only carries standard definition video it has all of the limitations of older analog technology so we mentioned four ways what are the other two well we've got an LCD DSi connector on the bottom of the board there and it's got a it takes a 15 pin ribbon cable now, DSi stands for Display Serial Interface, and it's a method of displaying video data. Now, there's not a lot of screens that support this because it's a lot more specific than an, you know, an HDMI port or composite video, but the Raspberry Pi Foundation have released their official 7-inch Raspberry Pi touchscreen, which is awesome. It's a really cool bit of gear, and it's designed so that the Raspberry Pi board itself just straps onto the back. So I've got one set up here and we'll take a look. It's quite easy to, uh, to set up. And what we've got is this ribbon connector here and a USB cable to get power to and from the boards. So you connect a micro USB cable uh, up to the Raspberry Pi board, to the power port, and then the other end of the USB cable is a standard full-size USB connector to the control board under there. If you can see under there, there's another control board. And this allows you, you just plug uh, the Raspberry, uh, Raspberry Pi power supply, the micro USB one. There's another USB port underneath there. And how well you can see that. Under there. And it then feeds power to the Raspberry Pi board as well as itself. And there's no drivers required to use this guy. It'll work straight out of the box. And there's four screws that you can mount the Raspberry Pi on the back. And we've got it set up with a Pimeroni case, very simple, nice case here, and it allows you to have a setup, a self contained setup for your Raspberry Pi. Now, the new build of Raspberry, sorry, of Raspbian includes an on screen keyboard, so you can do away with a keyboard and a mouse. It's a 10 point capacitive touchscreen, so you know, you can uh, use the on screen keyboard as well as use mouse functions just by clicking on different things. There's a whole bunch of educational apps designed to take advantage of the touch interface, which is really cool. Very cool bit of gear. But that is an example of how you use the LCD DSi connector there. You just unhook those two tabs there and the cable will slide out quite easily. And then you can, making sure those tabs are pulled out and you wanna make sure the orientation of the cable is correct as to where the conductors are, slide it back in. You don't 
ever have to force it. And while it's firmly seated in there, push those tabs down, not too hard, and that'll lock the cable into place. And that's all there is to it. Again, nothing fancy, no configuration required with that. It's pretty cool. The only, in fact, sort of configuration point of the three methods we've talked about is if you're using composite video and or audio, um, you're going to need to go into the config file and select that you're using that as the output method because it'll still go to the HDMI. And that's really easy. We've detailed the, uh, the instructions for that in the article. You can simply hold shift when you're starting up to go into the noobs manager, or you can take the card and plug it into a SD card reader on a computer and you just write in that it's SD TV underscore mode equals two and that sets it up uh, for support for the PAL, PAL um, RCA composite video. There's NTSC and depending on what region you're in, it might be a different mode. But here in Australia, we use PAL, PAL, which is good. And then the last method, last of all, you might be wondering, you know, what, how many ports are there on this thing? And that's the GPIO pins themselves. Now, the GPIO pins have a wide variety of hardware peripherals available on them. You've got I2C, Spy, all of these, you know, extra hardware uh, features that you can take advantage of. And a lot of manufacturers have created hats. The hat is the form factor of the Raspberry Pi that supports uh, direct uh, direct connection to the headers. Now it's not technically a hat all of the time because a hat requires EEPROM and a device tree structure and all the rest, but it takes advantage of the uh, the GPIO pins. And that's really cool. You can get ones that are small, you know, two, three inch touch screens, or you can get character displays to you know, output information from a script or a program, different methods of displaying. And that's probably the most in-depth. It's not super complicated, but each manufacturer is going to have their own set of drivers or you know, uh, Python scripts or things that are, that are going to configure the GPIO pins to work uh, how they're required. It's it's not hard, but if you follow the instructions on the products that you purchase, be it Adafruit, or SparkFun, or Pimeroni, they'll have a link to where you can download that and you can just download all the drivers directly onto your Raspberry Pi. And that's really all there is to it. Connecting a display up to the Raspberry Pi is so easy. We've covered four different methods of how you can do it. HDMI, composite video and audio as well, the LCD DSi connector, and also the GPIO pins. That's all for today, guys. Check out some of our other Raspberry Pi videos and get making. See ya.